What's going on guys? Today we are back with another video. It's actually me, we got Hayes in the boat, and we are gonna be targeting some big pre-spawn smallmouth up here in northern Wisconsin. And this is the time of year where smallmouth are probably a couple weeks out from their spawn, and uh, a lot of times it's the best time of year to catch very large fish in relatively predictable areas. So we're gonna talk all about basically how we're catching them, how we're finding them, the kind of the spots we're looking for, and how you can use side imaging to not just find fish, but find something else that definitely points you in the right direction this time of year using side imaging. Hooked up. Fish on, feels like a good one. Yeah, we rolling Hayes? Mm -hmm. We are hooked up, first smallie here and it's a good one. Throwing the hair jig, pretty flat out. We just got out here. We're kind of trying to see what they're going to be on. He's got a jerk bait on, something that covers a little bit more water. Look at this, this is exactly what we're after. See if you can get a shot of that, Hayes. Those are the mamas we're after today. Big northern Wisconsin bronzes right there. That all of about four pounds, I would say. I don't really know the weight on bass, because I'm not a bass guy, but that one hit it good. He's still got some fight left in him. Come here, buddy. That is what it's about right there. <laughs> and that is what we're after. Just chunks, absolute chunks on that little eighth ounce Kalen's hair jig. Super small, super finessey presentation, but a lot of times when these fish get up on these flats early in the season, you know, they, they get very timid. It's tough to get something that's gonna catch them. That hair jig's the perfect thing. Let's do that a whole bunch more times today. Too much fun. See you later, dude. Oh, oh, feel like another good one. Way out there this time. Hooked up on another one on the hair jig. It might be another really good one. Sometimes if you get up here and time this just right, and we'll kind of talk all about the location, this just right a lot of times what you get is these big females staging just off the edges of a lot of these main spawning flats that's another good one right there that is definitely what we're after fishing just gin clear water today and these fish are staging we got water temps that are like 47 48 they're angry today they're giving it a go look at that thing down there that is just too pretty looking you almost never lose them on a hair jig. I probably just curse myself by saying that. Too much fun. Come here, buddy. We're not done yet. Northern Wisconsin has some absolutely phenomenal smallmouth fishing that almost does not get taken advantage of unless these fish are on bed. There's like two weeks of the year where guys actually come up here and do a lot of smallmouth fishing. And uh, the rest of the time, you can have the lake pretty much to yourself. Come here, buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That is another just bruiser football fish right there. Hair jig just stuck them real good right in the corner. There we go. Super finesse, super fun. Those are some toads for northern Wisconsin. I mean, these are some studly, studly fish we're getting into. We'll let them go. Too cool. All right, guys, so we're fishing a hair jig. I actually did a video on this a couple of weeks ago, and uh, absolutely deadly way to fish. This is the 1 8 ounce. Kalen's hand tied marabou jig. I'll go ahead and link all this stuff down below. Um, it's a super slow way to fish, and I'm fishing this on a 7.6 medium light Elliott spinning rod. Um, they also make a great rod, which is a 7.9 light, which I think would be even better for this, and I definitely want to pick one of those up too. But you know, you basically the premise is you want something long and you want something soft because these baits are so light that it takes a little bit to get them out there. And basically, all we're doing long bomb cast as far as you can get them out there we're going all the way down to the bottom right and we're fishing a lot of this 8 to 12 13 feet once we're on the bottom all i'm doing is reeling about that speed right there sometimes i might just throw in a little pop like that i might stop it to make sure i'm hit bottom and your bites are going to be very soft all that's going to happen is the rod tip's just going to kind of start to load and that's why you want that light tip so that fish can load that tip up and most time you'll feel them kind of start digging and that's when you kind of swing into them so it's a super slow super methodical way to fish but when these fish get up on these flats and they're very timid early and you don't have a lot of wind for like a good jerk bait bite the hair jig is an absolute killer way to fish 
Fish on. Next cast. This is getting fun now. I actually uh, cast it out and I closed my bail and the line just started getting tight. <laughs> this is too much fun. Oh boy, and he's fighting this, I don't know. Unless he's hooked weird, it almost feels like he's hooked real close in the corner where he's running. Oh no, it's a football, it's a football. This is too much fun. I've probably made like six casts, caught fish on three of them. And they are all big and big and it almost looks like three of the same fishes is so ridiculous. Look at that one. <laughs> this is fun. Grab him here. Too cool. Come here, buddy. I don't think this one's quite as big actually. There's the first two. But look at that. Big thick belly. Another football right there. Just a chunk. That is too cool. He was not coming off either. There we go. Beauty, let's let him go. All right guys, so how are we finding these fish? What kind of spots are we looking for this time of year? Well, generally what we're looking for is a lot of times you can key where smallmouth are gonna be in the spring around their spawning locations, right? And uh, whether those fish are post-spawn, they're not gonna be too far away. Whether they're pre-spawn, they're really not gonna be too far away. And uh, basically what we're doing is we're looking for some, for some of the bigger, shallower rock and gravel flats on a lot of these lakes, right? Um, they can be main lake, they can be in a bay, whatever. It all kind of applies, right? So, you know, we're looking for a big kind of flat that looks something like this right here. This is exactly what you're looking for. You can see all this red here. Now, most of the time, these smallmouth are gonna spawn, kind of depending on what lake you're in, from two feet out to like maybe 10 feet. There'll be some fish that spawn in the deep, clear lakes significantly deeper than that, but for the most part, that's kind of the depths you're looking at. Now, when you find a big spawn flat like this, basically the next thing we're doing as far as targeting these fish go, is we're finding some kind of point that comes off this that falls out to very deep water, or a quick break off one side that falls out to very deep water. Because <clears throat> when these smallmouth stage to move up, basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna use that, that area that has that point extension in a little bit deeper water to sit on before they move up on top, like it is right now or they're gonna sit just off the break on some of the very steep break lines that come off these spawning flats. So these are the two kind of things that we're looking for, right? We're looking for number one, these big spawning flats, identify that. Then identify some of the key pieces of structure off, just off the side in a little bit deeper water. Either want a point extension that looks like this or a very steep break off the side looks like this. Cause a lot of these fish, if they're not on the bottom, they might sit halfway down out right off that steep break so they can move up onto that flat quick. So that's how we're fishing. That's where we're looking for these fish and uh, let's get back to it. Fish on. Just keep fishing, keep fishing. We're hooked up on another one on the hair jig. Once you kind of find these little staging areas like this, like we've obviously found, where these fish are just kind of sitting down there waiting to push up on these bigger flats. It's kind of just like the same cast over and over and over. Some days you can pull up and they will not all be this big. But obviously if the timing's right, like we lucked into today, they are all big. You get this many big fish and this many consecutive casts now without catching a small one is relatively unheard of. But it's been so long since fish have actually bit that it feels amazing to be having a good day again. You know, you want to say like, oh, this is a freak thing, but realistically, I mean, you should be catching a lot of fish. It's just that the bite's been so rough the past week and a half here with all the cold. We finally got a turnaround day and there's another horse of a smallmouth right there. We'll let him go. This one's not as big, not as big, not as big. But still a very respectable fish. There he is right there. This one's probably only about a three pounder. Three and a half. Three and a half, he's telling me. I've never actually weighed a bass, but come here, buddy. All right, well, for being out here for about 
five minutes so far, we're doing pretty good. But that's what it's about right there. One after another right now, too cool. Pre-spawn is definitely the best time to come out here and catch big ones, probably besides late October, but spring fishing's always a blast. I'll let him go. All right, so another great tip, you know, it's easy to tell where the smallmouth are spawning when the smallmouth are spawning, right? That's super easy to tell. Um, but a lot of times what I do, you know, once I get on one of these bigger rock and gravel flats that kind of fit the description, these big flats, you know, four to 12 feet deep, what I start doing is I start driving around with my side imaging on. And, you know, number one, I want to see good rock because good rock's just always good for smallmouth. But a lot of times what you can see are old smallmouth beds. And this leads me right away, you know, I can, even though the smallmouth are not going to spawn here for a couple of weeks yet, you can see these old beds in a lot of lakes and a lot of spots. And they look something like this right here, um, these slight depressions in them. And uh, it's super obvious kind of once you get used to picking these things out, um, you know, what you're looking at. You can see bluegill beds on side imaging. You can see almost every kind of bed on side imaging. Sometimes you might have one or two smallmouth beds here and there. Sometimes it might be a whole bunch. But, you know, being able to look at your side imaging and identify where those fish are going to spawn gives you a huge advantage as far as being able to pick an adjacent piece of structure to that where those fish are probably at now when they're in, in order to basically move up shallow in a week or so. All right, guys, well, that is going to do it for a quick little smallmouth video. You know, we wanted to come out and catch a couple of fish, and uh, we did it. And now we are on to the next thing. I want to get back to walleye, so that's what we're going to do. But hopefully this is beneficial for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy the smallmouth videos. My smallmouth videos never get anything for views. So if you're watching it all the way to the end, you're one of the few that actually made it this far in the video. So that's impressive and good work. Um, but otherwise, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe. Stay tuned. Till next time.